Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick heads up. The second Global Product Owner Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. And it's all lowercase, all one word. Oh, and uh, stick with us until the end of the episode to know the dates and the tracks that we have for you in this year's summit. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week, joining us from Germany is Inga Bergmann. Hey, Inga. Welcome to the show. Hey, Vasco. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. So Inga is an empathic provocateur dedicated to unlocking the potential of teams on their way to high performance. As an agile and organizational coach, she fosters psychological, safe and thought-provoking environments where human-centered approaches and agile principles apply. She emphasizes trust and meaningful connections as enablers of successful collaboration and growth. Uh, Inga, that was a short intro. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? Sure. So how did I end up becoming a Scrum Master? I think it's one of the classical, well, it just happened stories where like all of their Scrum Master and Agile courses kind of lean into. So I'm, I'm holding a degree in industrial engineering. So I'm way away from that these days. Uh, my first job was in project management. Uh, I had a high focus on stakeholder management already back then, but it was really classical German SME, lots of hierarchies, not so much collaboration with my peers. And after a while, even though it wasn't the worst job I ever had, it was like, hmm, there must be more out there. Like, hmm, I want to do something more meaningful, a little bit more impact because I felt like, okay, we're doing this, but I couldn't feel myself in it. So I went to Australia for sabbatical. Guess what? I didn't find my purpose there. <laughs> even though I tried, but I came back and at least had an idea of, okay, I want to do something else now. So I was lucky enough to receive some scrum trainings and I got my scrum certifications. And technically, then I was a scrum master. But of course, we all know that it's not uh, when I really was a scrum master, but that was only the first step into becoming it and starting the journey. So um, I ended up being, um, or starting working in a, in a startup in Berlin. Here in Germany, I was hired, still hired as a IT project manager then. At least I was stepping into this bubble of, of industry thingy. It was exciting, but still IT project management. But luckily, I wasn't doing that job. From day one, I was really focusing on how people could collaborate better with each other, but also in, in cross-collaboration things and um, how they could reach better outcomes in the work. And in the end... Um, we also had Scrum teams and I was working in the setup where I was supporting several teams, Scrum and others to improve how they were working together, how they could create best and possible environment to work together. And after a while, eventually I became the Scrum master of one of those Scrum teams. And I think it was also the point where we, from the comp company perspective, we decided to change my role from IT project management into uh, Scrum master, or I think it was agile coach by then, but I was holding the role of a Scrum master. And ever since, I've been working as a Scrum Master and as an Agile coach, and I'm still learning day by day. Absolutely. We all learn all the time, which, of course, is uh, what we talk about here on the podcast, especially today, the Fail Monday episode. So, Inga, tell us uh, about a moment where you, as a Scrum Master, you did your best, but at that time, as so often happens, and learning experiences, they are for sure, the best just wasn't good enough. So tell us that story. And we'll dive into the takeaways later, but tell us the story first. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to. It was where um, there was this team in our company was working good or bad together, however, and some sort of their manager was approaching me, telling me, hey, they, they're not working well together. Can you go there, help them develop their how they work and what they want to do? And because... It, we think they need help you could be uh, of value there so i went there and did my thing but yeah it didn't work out so what did you do <laughs> walk, walk us through that what did you try yes. uh so what i did is uh so on the one hand i i, I learned rather quickly that there were some tension within existing 
with between existing team members. There was one part that I knew there were some changes um, recently had happened to the team. So some people were had been gone because they had changed jobs and there were new team members coming as well. So I was, I was thinking, okay, there are new team members. Um, I'll just use this as my first touch point. I'll offer some sort of a team get to know session that where they can get to know each other, how what they like, how they like to work, how they how they to help them connect with each other and to figure out how they could could work together. So um, kind of discuss the change. Not even that because it had happened already, but I rather was offering like, okay, let's get together. And because they were really new joiners, I'm really just starting very low with like telling each other who they were, what they like, how they enjoy working together so that they could, going from there, starting to introduce a change, they needed to work together well. Um, and um, But they weren't so much into that socializing part, so there was a bit of a hiccup there. So what, what, how did you notice that? Like, did they not want to talk to each other? Did they were kind of just looking at their watch and wanting to leave? How, how did you notice that? Um, so it was a remote setup, so they at least they couldn't leave the room. <laughs> but um, it was like they didn't engage too much in those conversations. I was asking, this, okay, introduce yourself, what is important to you? So a bit more on this, uh, I don't want to say feely touchy part, but really on the trying to to create connection on the emotional on the emotional level as well. But they didn't um, resonate too much with that. It seems so. My style maybe also was not matching what they needed at that moment so um it was a bit of a more dry and slow not so fluid and um situation we were in so it was it worked out and then they said it was okay for them but i felt like oh, this didn't feel the best i could have done afterwards so when you look back and you think about what was happening at the time what, what do you take from that story that then helps you now and, and after that to, to be different, to adapt to that kind of situation? Mm. Um, what I would do different now is, so, I mean, I went there and I offered this session because I asked them up front if they want to do that. And they said, yes, they wanted to do that. But I also had this back in my back of my head, this idea of, okay, I, I sh shall go there to help them find their ways of working. And probably I was, even though I was not aware of it, already pushing in that direction from, from how I, I was doing it and they were not, probably not ready. And I should have asked more openly and being more in a conversation with them what they actually needed in terms of how I could support them in doing that. And even though I, um, along the lines, at some point I did that and they couldn't really answer it, I should have probably, I could, I could, I could have done better in, going deeper with them into to seeing if there's something I could do, but also and, accepting, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask, how, how could you then be more open? Like now with the benefit of hindsight and knowing what you know today, what, what would you do differently? How would you express that more openness? How would I express it? Probably uh, on the one hand, I would really tell them, I don't know yet what I want to do with them and also um, when I go into thinking about how I can help them, not go too much into the solution thinking already, but rather think about how I can explore with them together what what I could do. And um, yeah, it's just, even though I, I think I do that a lot, again, remind myself of starting with listening and not not going into helping mode too quickly. Yeah, and one thing that is really crucial is this showing that you are also there to learn, right? Like showing that I don't know yet what we need to do, but let's exactly. start by listening to what you want to do. And, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that I, I very often come to is that if somebody asks you to help them, you're already halfway there, right? Like the, the, the hard part is people wanting to change something, wanting to adapt or or get rid of attention or, or solve yeah. a conflict, whatever that might be, right? And if they are there, if they already want it, then we can come in and help. But if they don't even want it, when we go and try to help people that are not yet ready, we, we have to really, quote unquote, push them, right? Like yeah. they, they are not open to move, they, they have to be pushed. And maybe that works sometimes, but it's not necessarily the the easiest and, and uh, the, the most fulfilling way to act with a team.
And also probably not the most impactful one because I, I really believe in intrinsic motivation. So if they don't want come don't want to do it because they want to do it, how sustainable can it be? Absolutely. They need to want to do it because otherwise it's not sustainable. Very good story. Thank you for sharing that, Inga. You're welcome. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around and listening to the details of the Product Owner Summit, this year's global summit dedicated to a critical Scrum role, the Product Owner role, of course. We'll have some amazing keynotes and four tracks filled with first-hand stories and experiences for Product Owners to learn more about that critical Scrum role. The summit will take place between April 23rd and 25th, so book your calendars. There will be loads of sessions for you to attend. One of the keynotes will be Dave West, the product owner and CEO at Scrum.org, one of the largest Scrum organizations in the world. If you want to know more, check out the details at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. We will also have four tracks. The four tracks will cover cross-functional product ownership. That's track one, as uh, Pixar's Ratatouille said, not every idea can be a great idea, but a great idea can come from anywhere. And this quote emphasizes the importance of a product owner being open to all ideas, regardless of the source, and also challenges us to focus on getting good ideas from everywhere and involving the whole team in the product owner role and responsibilities. The second track is designing products for growth, where we explore how to craft products ready for scalable growth, merging practical strategies with innovation. The idea here is to learn to design products for growth, whether it is sales or customer acquisition. The third track is Know Your Users, user-centric approaches for agile development. In this track, we learn to master user-centric techniques in agile development, to deeply understand customer needs and transform insights into meaningful UX designs that focus on engagement and satisfaction. This is a track ideal for innovation-focused agile teams. And the fourth track, one of the most exciting tracks, in my opinion, is product development with AI, ideas for product owners. Not only do we discuss about using AI in the products, but also AI for product owners to learn to make a bigger impact with the help of the AI tools that we already have. The Product Owner Summit will also present to you great opportunities to network with your peers. So get your ticket and join our Slack. You can get the ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. As always, we have free tickets and also the paid tickets that help to support this podcast. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2024. That's all lowercase, all one word, product owner 2024. I'll see you in the summit floor.